Hello, good morning, it's 8 a.m. and I'm here for our Wednesday Live to answer client student questions so that you can live your best life alcohol free. Now I kind of confused myself this week because I have been going live at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday Pacific time for years now, ever since 2019. And I thought to myself, you know what, I want to change it. I want to change it and go live an hour later because I just, I want to have more time in my morning to do my morning routine, have a little bit more spaciousness. And so I decided to change it last week and I like like went to all the places I thought that the, the time was listed and I started changing it. And then I re realized that within less than a month, I'm going to be traveling in Europe and I'm not going to want the later time because then it's going to be super late in the evening for me. So I'm like, you know what, let's just keep the same time. So sorry if you've been confused. Um, it's going to stay 8 a.m. Pacific time, which is 11 a.m. Eastern, and I've just learned 5 p.m. in Europe <laughs> so that it can work out while I'm traveling this summer. In a life update, I'm traveling in Europe this summer. I'm super excited. I've always wanted to live there. So my husband and I decided to visit for 90 days, which is the most he can go right now on his visa, and basically live there, right? So we have family in Europe in uh, Warsaw, Poland. So I'm going to stay at my uh, grandma's old apartment and um, make that my home base. And then we'll travel around as we go. We have a wedding in Italy, so we'll be in Italy, we'll be in Croatia, we'll be in France. Um, I'm just so excited because this is like a huge dream coming true for me. Um, anyways, I have an incredible question today from a client that I think is just so juicy and such a great one to ask. And it's about how to journal because... Let me just say this, if you want to change your relationship with alcohol, you have to get to know yourself. You have to understand your deeper motivations, your deeper fears, your deeper thoughts, your deeper, dif deeper beliefs. And I think a journal is the best tool in order to uncover all that stuff. Because if you're not doing it with a journal, you're just kind of thinking all this stuff in your head and it never really gets processed. In fact, there's a lot of studies that show that we can access deeper parts of our subconscious when we write things down. There's this famous quote by Joan Didion, who's a famous author, who says, I don't know what I think until I write it down. And so journaling for me was a crucial tool in changing my relationship with alcohol. And to this day is something I cannot live without. I do a morning routine almost every single day. And a lot of times I will journal and meditate and do affirmations and, and read and exercise, all these little things. But if I don't have time, if I only have a quick 10 minutes to do my morning routine, the only thing that stays, the only thing I do no matter what, it's journaling. And I might journal later in the evening as well. Like my journal is just my best friend. I have so many of them in my closet. <laughs> They're like in a Tupperware box. And I just keep them and keep them and keep them. And it really has helped me process not only my feelings, but also determine what I really want in my life. Determine my desires. Determine the beliefs that are also holding me back from what I want and then helping myself debunk them and get through them so that I can keep moving forward and keep helping people. So a journal I think is really, really critical. Okay, one minute, the cat is being annoying. <gasps> Sorry about that. I have a cat who just wanted to leave the, this room. So anyway, a journal has been really, really crucial for me and I think for you as well, making best friends with your journal is really critical. You know, you can use something online, you could do an app, you could get a beautiful journal. I like using like a leather bound journal with like really small lines. I hate the big lines ones. Uh, those things really, really make me happy and I travel with it. I take it everywhere with me. And it's kind of normal. I feel like some people think like, oh my God, what if I journal something really deep and personal or something about my relationship with alcohol and someone else finds it? Well, like... I think that that's thinking in the lines of like, we are so important, everyone cares about what we have to say. Um, I just wouldn't worry about that. I really, really wouldn't worry about that. It's not worth bottling up all your thoughts and feelings because the fear of one day someone might read your journal. Maybe one day someone will, right? And maybe they'll actually learn and, and have their minds blown because of how deep and insightful you are instead of thinking that like somehow it means something bad about you. I'm going to try to be short today because I am actually doing kind of like a TED talk later today. Um, it's not TED, but it is at my former uh, university where I used to go to school, where I got my MBA and also where I used to work. And it's like a TED, tile, TED talk style format where I'm going to be speaking on stage um, for about seven minutes later today. And so I'm just going to try to preserve my voice and go as short as possible today. So here are the five ways to journal when you're kind of stumped, when you know you want to be journaling, but you haven't really made a good habit out of it. And whatever you're journaling maybe right now just doesn't feel like you're doing it right, maybe. 
And there is no wrong way to journal, but maybe when you're stumped, here's some five ideas that you can use to really get something on the page. And it doesn't matter what you write, as long as you're just filling a page or two, it's beautiful to just process your thoughts. So the first one is gratitude. And gratitude is something that literally anyone can do. We can all write down what we're grateful for from the day before. So if you wake up and you do your journaling in the morning, you know, just think back to yesterday and just be like, wow, what am I grateful for that happened yesterday? Could be the little things, could be the big things, but getting in self, yourself into a habit of just sharing gratitude first thing in the morning can really help you build um, a happy feeling in the morning as well, right? Because you bring up all these things, these blessings that you might have not even noticed or thanked in the moment. So gratitude's always a great place to start. Another great place to add on to maybe gratitude is going through your dreams. So if you if you journal in the morning, you know, you, you wake up, you probably had a bunch of dreams and a lot of people keep dream journals where they just write down what they dreamed about. Could be just even a few sentences just to process it, just to get it out, just to like acknowledge that it happened, you know, just a little bit of what happened in your dreams. So that's number two. Number three is writing down um, stream of consciousness. So stream of consciousness is this idea that it doesn't matter what you write, you just express yourself. You just try to get to a page or two without editing it, without, you know, worrying about what you're saying. And this idea really comes from Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way, where she actually recommends people write three pages of just pure stream of consciousness in the morning. And the point of this, she calls it morning pages, is not to be eloquent, is not to be insightful, is not to be beautiful, not to be even deep. It's just to get the crap out of our head so that then we can have the insightful thoughts. Then we can have the really creative ideas. And so, like, even when you don't know what to write, you could literally be like, I don't know what to write. (laughs) You know, I have to just fill three pages. Like, literally stream of consciousness. Just write. It doesn't matter what you're saying. And stream of consciousness can really be good for those of us who feel a little critical about what we write down because then it is saying that, hey, it's not about the quality of what you write that matters. It's just about the quantity. Your goal is just to write a page or two, and once you do that, you can check the box. It doesn't matter what you actually write. So stream of consciousness is another really great way to just process the crap out and really just write down whatever. You know, if it was like an argument you had with someone and you want to write it out there, or if it was something that's stressing you out, just get it out. Just write it down, right? Just pure stream of consciousness. Okay, the fourth one is one of my favorites, and this is doing affirmations and visualization in your journal. So an affirmation is a statement where you say something that you want and you say it in the present tense. You know, like, I am wildly abundant, or I change a lot of lives, or I'm an author. You know, whatever it is, you say it in the present tense. So writing your affirmations is a beautiful way to embed it into your subconscious. You cannot become something that you don't believe is possible for you. You cannot have something you don't believe is possible for you. So you have to start believing on a subconscious level it's possible And affirmations is a really great way to do that. So sometimes I will repeat the same affirmation over and over and just write it a few times. Or sometimes I will just do a huge mix of different affirmations, right? And then I might also visualize on top of that. So visualization is really when you imagine yourself in a future situation that is really delightful. You know, so maybe you're in the Maldives having a beautiful vacation and you look really chic in your white bathing suit and you're having a great time. Or maybe you're meeting a hero of yours at an event you know, whatever it is, you actually imagine that future situation. And I'm not the best at imagining, like, my, my, what is it? Like, I lose the train of thought pretty easily. So I actually use my journal to visualize it, too. Like, I see it in my mind, but then I write it down. And it's almost as if I'm trying to capture a story. Like, hey, I'm here in Brazil on the beach with this beautiful hat. Or, hey, I, I you know, like, I get to go on TV again or something. Whatever it is, I, I try to write down the visualization. So maybe for you, it's like, I'm traveling the world. I am, you know, uh, I put my notice in at my job. Like, whatever it is that you see as the future self of you, you write it down. And this is four and a half now, so I'm going to share five ideas. But the four and a half idea is also writing in yourself a pep talk. And for this, you can actually change the pronoun you use. Instead of saying, I am, you can actually switch it to you. So sometimes people feel better claiming that because the you is like coming from someone else. It's almost as if like the universe or God is saying to it, you know? So by saying like, you are so powerful, you are so beautiful, you are amazing, you are changing lives. Like literally you could give yourself a pep talk in your journal by using the the pronoun you and really speaking highly of yourself. And I know that can feel weird for people. I know. But 
it is a way to subconsciously change your beliefs and believe anything is possible. So it is highly valuable. Some of the things I wrote in my journal back in 2018, 2019, like you are, you are, you are, they all happened for me. I believe in this stuff a lot. Now, the fifth way you can journal is also a really great favorite. It's using prompts. So a prompt is like an actual question that you use and then you answer it. <clears throat> you can find prompts in all of my Become Euphoric courses and in Bolden, in my coaching, we'll do exercises together. So if you're doing a personal growth program with Euphoric, you will definitely have reflection questions every day. Dry boot camp, all of those have lots of reflection. Um, but you can also find, like, obviously my book. My book will have a lot of reflection questions. In the eight-week guide, there's reflection questions at the end of each week. Also, a lot of other self-help books are structured that way, right? So a lot of other personal development books have prompts at the end of their chapters that you answer questions. And these are perfect ways to journal. So if you're always reading a personal growth book, you will never run out of prompts. So if you want to wait to the morning, like, or the evening, whenever you journal, take out that book, see the prompt, and then just journal on that for a little bit. There you go. So hopefully these five ideas could uh, really help you when you're feeling stumped. You're not sure what to journal about. You don't know how to journal yet. It's not really a habit you've gone into. And like I said, there are apps, apps out there. There's literally apps out there where you can just say what you're grateful for every day. Um, I love like a leather bound journal that I use. Like you can type on your computer. There's so many different ways to journal. But really, really aim to make a journal your best friend as you're changing your relationship with alcohol and going after your dream life because otherwise we just get stuck in our heads and we just keep believing the same thing over and over and over in autopilot. And a journal can be honestly almost like a spotlight to help you determine where you're stuck and where you need to move forward and how to actually do that and how to actually believe it's possible for you. So make your journal your best friend. Hopefully these five tips were helpful for you. I'll see you next week at Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific, and I hope you have a beautiful week. I'm rooting for you. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a special gift to share with the world, and just removing that alcohol is the secret sauce to unlocking your fullest potential and going on the wildest personal growth ride of your life. So I'm super happy you're here. You're the most intuitive, brave, wise woman I've ever, ever, ever had the chance to meet because you know what doesn't serve you anymore, and you're striving to build a better life. What could be more admirable than that? All right.